Well, now we're going to switch gears and talk about triple negative breast cancer. And I think one of the first things uh, that I'd like to talk about, it's great I've got Hope Rugo sitting next to me, who did one of the trials very, and still is continuing on one of the very, very important trials on this topic, is what do we do about nanoparticle paclitaxel? I mean, we've had this drug now for how many years? Probably 10, 15 years already. You know, we had initial data uh, from your CLGB trial. You updated it at San Antonio. Do you want to talk about that to begin? Yeah, I mean, for CLGB 40502 now, an alliance <laughs> trial, uh, was a randomized phase three trial in patients in first-line chemotherapy for metastatic breast cancer, uh, and patients were randomized to receive paclitaxel, nab paclitaxel, or exabepilone, uh, as weekly therapy, three on, one off, with bevacizumab, and the majority of patients received bevacizumab, but was the current standard of care at the time that the study was designed, and even when we made it optional, everybody went on bevacizumab because it was available to them. So uh, what the nab paclitaxel dose, which was discussed for two years, I think, before the study opened, was based on a phase two Russian study uh, that uh, was uh, actually published with Bill Gratishar as the first author. And they had one arm that was 150 per meter squared and one that was 100 per meter squared using that weekly schedule of nab paclitaxel. And they so showed superiority in terms of response and PFS in the 150 per meter squared and tolerance. Uh, but that was a small, you know, relatively small phase two study in a place where patients didn't have options for other therapy and didn't get multiple lines of therapy, unlike our patients. Uh, and in our trial, the 150 per meter squared was too toxic and ixabepilone was inferior and also had some toxicity, although less hematologic toxicity. Uh, but ixabepilone was clearly inferior. When we updated our data, and looked at the subsets of ER positive and ER negative, uh, we still showed, it, it was interesting, I mean, we still showed that nabpaclitaxel was certainly the best tolerated drug, and in the overall population, that uh, paclitaxel was the uh, you know, sort of standard arm. Nabpaclitaxel was about similar, but not superior, and ixabepilone was inferior. When looked at, uh, also at overall survival, ixabepilone was inferior. But when we looked at the subset analysis of ER positive and triple negative disease, uh, we had a smaller section of patients who had triple negative breast cancer under 30%, but it looked like the patients who received nab paclitaxel had superior outcome than those who received paclitaxel. Again, Ixabeplo is still inferior, so we put that off to the side. Uh, and ER positive disease, that <coughs> wasn't the case. Paclitaxel was superior. You know, I was thinking to myself, that maybe, and it's really hard to go back in a retrospective subset analysis and look at that, is that if you had ear positive disease, you know, you have other options, right? Lots of options. So maybe people were more willing to drop the drug faster, right? So paclitaxel, they stayed on for longer. I mean, some of the people stayed on paclitaxel for two years on that study. Did you see that? Did you actually see the dose intensity less in the ear positive? So yeah, actually, when we looked at it, it was very hard to assess okay. that. And it looked like the dose intensity and dose reductions were similar. Okay. I just think that it's a hard thing to assess exactly right. what people are doing and why and we had so many more patients with ER positive and ER negative disease but we did look at it and it didn't look different overall but what we did see was that by cycle three for nab paclitaxel almost everybody had dose reduced and people had dropped out regardless of that we saw this you know superiority in the triple negative group which is fascinating what kind of superiority what was it PFS OS it was looking at PFS okay. um, OS is a little harder you know in the trial like that but there was just a uh, difference that favored still nab paclitaxel and ixabepilone was inferior. Right. Um, so we also, you know, what was presented right next to our presentation was Jeparcepto. And remember, these are all looking at subsets in trials that are farther out. So these are hypothesis generating. They, uh, they would need to be further assessed. But in Jeparcepto, which is looking at neoadjuvant to nab paclitaxel, they also showed 150 per meter square was too toxic and dropped to 125. Um, but they did show uh, in there looking at event-free survival superiority with the nab paclitaxel group, both in the ER positive and ER negative groups, actually, maybe a little more in ER positive, hard to say, versus paclitaxel. I, I think it's hard to know what to take home from both of those. I'm interested in everybody's thoughts on yeah, it. I think that, so. you know, clearly 150 per meter squared should never be used in nab paclitaxel. It's way too toxic. Uh, and 100 per meter squared, I think, is our general standard. Uh, 125 
may have some benefits in some settings. A neoadjuvant study that was done by Luca Gianni that looked at a three-on-one off in the neoadjuvant setting showed no superiority with nab paclitaxel. But it was a three-on-one off thing. That's why I asked so the So they got before. less drug overall Correct. compared to the Jepar Septo trial. Is that really what the difference is in the triple negative population? It's hard to know. Our trial in the metastatic setting, I think we've shown in triple negative breast cancer that if you give a sort of more intensive chemo in the patients who are chemotherapy responsive, they may do better. Right. So that's not everybody, but they may do better. You may overcome some resistance. So should we be using that paclitaxel instead of paclitaxel? I think it's a hard call. Uh, I think it's clearly a very useful drug for our patients. We have a low threshold for switching and we certainly use it in the metastatic setting. Uh, but I think that this data as yet isn't enough to say you should always be using that paclitaxel. I, I think the Jepar Septo, I was very impressed by the Jepar Septo study where patients were randomized to paclitaxel versus NAB, paclitaxel followed by AC in both groups, particularly in the triple negative population, the PCR pathologic complete response rate was much higher. But interestingly, even if patients did not achieve PCR, the event-free survival was much better, significantly better for patients treated with NAB paclitaxel compared to paclitaxel. So I thought that was intriguing. 125 is too much. I use 100 milligrams per meter square. It's not FDA approved. This was not an FDA registration trial, but I'm very intrigued. So we're the moving events our were small, right. and it was uh, not planned to be looked at exactly that way. So I, I find it hard to believe. I understand. I just find it hard to believe that if you didn't have a that the chemo you got before surgery matters for that right. cancer. It might. But, uh, but you might be moving up the RCB threes to ones or yeah, the total. Yeah, I think That's it's exactly still a right. response it, criteria. It's but not, I, I, I but think it's not just the PCR. The, I, there's although I agree with uh, Hope that I think at this point, I don't know how to take home this to the, the data from these two trials to change my practice right away. I think we do need some kind of validation, at least in the the early stage setting, to be able to justify a 75% grade one, two peripheral neuropathy from NAP paclitaxel. The, the dosing of 150 changed over to 125, the event-free survival. We really did not see the difference in the hazard ratios broken down by the doses that the patients received. It's hard to received. do. I think there's not enough patients in that. To but yeah, I think it's hard. And the events were small. And the events, and the events were, small. were so small. So right, I, I think outside of a clinical trial, I'm not sure I am going to personally change my practice to utilize NAP But there won't be. You think there'll be more clinical trials? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm using, yeah. still using weekly Because Celgene just bought a, they're now into... I'm you still know, using weekly paclitaxel. CAR T cells, or are they going to still work right, on Right, for the standard. You know? I'm using weekly paclitaxel and AC for the standard, but my, based on this presentation in San Antonio, my threshold to switch what is has for decreased. Do, do, you <laughs> think, yeah. right. do, do you all think it's a dose effect or a drug effect? Is there something inherently different about that paclitaxel? We heard dose, the whole story about probably. Spark and all that. that spark which never, is but no, spark never I think never partly dose. Right. Out. It's dose, right? I think yeah. it's better yeah. to which give what a drug use. that is with right. protein than with than 100. 100. <laughs> Which is why I'm having a, a hard time issue. taking That's this. Right. It's, it's, a totally, it's a delivery issue. issue. I think it's yeah. a better it's a technology. Issue. Obviously, it's more expensive. It was the same cost. Uh, more no toxic, uh, yeah. more expensive. Yes. Yes. Because we wouldn't have to use steroid pre yeah. Right. Yeah. And the it's neuropathy the rate is yeah. lower. Actually, you know, if you use 100 per meter squared for 12 weeks, the neuropathy rate in the long run is probably lower than paclitaxel because you don't have the cremophore. So I think that, you know, I agree. I was just saying that to a patient, if we, I was trying to get authorization for somebody who already has grade two neuropathy on weekly paclitaxel in the neoadjuvant setting, which of course I had to do a peer to peer for in the middle of clinic, but yeah. the patient got the NAB paclitaxel and I think that that's a reasonable thing to do. Right, so I think that the, the bottom line is that where it was kind of negative a couple years ago, I think it's beginning to change, to shift a little bit. I think that we have less of a barrier to use it. That would be the best way yes, to summarize. Yes, I think so that's a good summary. How do you incorporate carboplatin? That's a great question. <laughs>